All I know is that for centuries, cultures have celebrated the milestones of life. A child being born, coming of age, a marriage, a death, and they've used way too many resources to celebrate those things. I don't see that ending. I just think the conditions in which we do that have changed. It, it, I'm 40 years old. It's taken me this long to figure out what I'm good at in life. I know I'm good at this. So it's like, okay, so what are my rules now? And I just keep trying to be creative and innovate around the cards we're dealt. My name is Kat Ferguson, and I'm an event planner. My name is Valerie Chrysostomo, and I am an event planner and florist in the Atlanta area. My name is Summer McLean. I'm the owner of My Simply Perfect Events. I've been an event planner for about 14 years now. My first clients just celebrated their 14th year anniversary. I was usually working on weddings for about a year. I was a part of everything. All touch points that go into planning a wedding, I was a part of. I really do love weddings. I love the first dance. Ooh, I love a good first dance. I love the entrance. I love seeing a bride for the first time in her gown. When a bride walks in and says, this is better than I ever thought it could be. Like that's my, ah, I love it. People put a lot into their wedding. In life, we only have so many grand milestones and that's one of the big ones. Right after Valentine's Day, the events kind of start to roll up and things start to happen. So you have the March, April, May events that are starting to unfold. We're receiving RSVPs. We're pretty much tying the loose ends for events that are a month out. We didn't really understand the severity. So we just went ahead and continued to plan because we thought the last two weeks of March, oh, it's gonna blow over, it's going to be fine. In March, I remember my sister sent a text message and she said, it's happening. You know, everything was getting locked down. And I just thought, okay, um, the weddings will just have to get pushed back to like July. I called one of my brides, you know, I said, hey, listen, I wanna put this in your ear. I think it's, you know, we probably need to push this back a little bit. She said, we're gonna make a decision at, um, next week. And I said, make a decision by tomorrow. She said, okay. I would say as soon as March happened, I lost about 80% of the business. When I say lost, that means canceled and or postponed to 2021. And then about 20% of the business held back. I actually took an April wedding and postponed it to October in which I've just postponed again until next April. As planners, we're always like, we can make anything happen, let's do it. And so to come in and say, hey, listen, I think this is more serious, it's hard because not everybody wants to hear that. It's one thing to deal with one wedding in your year that's gonna cancel, maybe two. It's one thing to deal with a rain plan that comes up at the last minute. Even the Thomas fires and we're moving venues. This was everything, everyone, all at once. Just like, phew a flat lay down of just all of the work you had done. And yeah, it was very, it was heavy. It was very, really heavy, but you just, the same way you load in, you load out, you know, it's like, who are my vendors? Call them up. We either postpone or we're canceling. If you're canceling, can I get some of my money back? How much money can I get back? If you postponed your wedding, it was no financial consequence. If you canceled your wedding, the financial consequence was great. Most vendors were unable to give full refunds. And so clients lost a lot of money who canceled. That's hard to watch. You don't want anyone to put their money forward and then not get something in return, especially as significant as their wedding day. That's half of the battle with the virus. We may not have it or not be sick or anything, but the level of disappointment that we're feeling is something that's very traumatic. And a lot of people will look back two or three years and they'll come out of it and they'll be like, well, I was really, really down, but I didn't realize that I was working through all these feelings and emotions. 
I get emotional even thinking about it because I've listened and heard and, and tried to hold hands through a lot of kind of just sadness and letting their weddings go. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of sadness from the couples and their families. <laughs> and that's been hard. Um, the most of my couples are strong. Some of them have shocked me on how much they've been able to let go of their wedding day. Nobody wants to let go of something they've worked that long and that hard at planning. But what could they do? I mean, it was their, their hands were tied. Not only are people counting on the wedding, but they're counting on the what after the wedding. Some of them are waiting to have children until after they get married. There's a lot wrapped up in a wedding other than just a big party. And so it was like a domino financially and a domino emotionally that came up for everyone involved. A lot of contracts and agreements have been tested. Everyone has had a unique opportunity to see and take a look at their systems to see if this really works or if this really does not work. The conversations are incredibly awkward. This is my job, this is how I eat, this is how I put food on the table. So, if you booked me a year ago, of course none of us knew this was gonna happen, but that's why I have a clause in my contract. I can't be held responsible because I can't do your wedding because there's no venue. But also, I cannot be held responsible because I'm not gonna put my life in danger. If you are unwilling to change your date to a time that is not in the middle of a pandemic, and I am unwilling to risk my life, we're at an impasse. Everyone is staying afloat or pivoting or just failing but coming up new. Um, so you guys are always talking about planners don't share information and you know, you don't have the confidence and how is this going to, how is being a planner going to change my life or how is learning from you going to change my business? Rather than me telling you, why don't I have some of my students tell you? I did a little bit of a pivot. I started teaching a lot of classes online. I teach people the ins and outs of planning weddings, about contracts, how to build a wedding, you know, where to start, how to find vendors, advertising, all that stuff. It felt like minimum, no one was doing a wedding with less than 75 people. And they're spending on average thirty to $60,000. Just kind of an average family. You know, that's a lot of money. It's a huge investment. If anything, I think that these times have asked people to slow down, focus their dollars, and think about their guest list. And most planners would kill me for saying this, but I think that's a good thing. Get clear with what's really, really important. Having some huge fancy night, maybe that's not the priority anymore. In the 60s, 70s, 80s, the reason why those weddings were larger was A, because the families were paying for them, right? <laughs> they were throwing their wedding on behalf of their daughter. And now, you know, you have a shift 30 years later where the parents just show up and you honor them because you love them, but guess who's paying for it? And guess who's paying for student loans? And guess who wants a really nice house? And guess who's focused on their kids? Like, there's so much more on a millennial's mind because those responsibilities of even a home is not, is oftentimes not even inherited. In March, I closed up shop and really took the time to take care of my clients who were unwrapping from their wedding day, figuring out how we were going to move them, and then sort of addressing those that were truly just canceling all just outright. As those months kind of went by, I saw many of my couples choosing to get married anyways, and that meant going to the courthouse. I've had couples get married at the Honda Center. <laughs> <laughs> and so that start, started like, hey, my, my people are out there, 
They still want to get married. They're willing to play by the rules, which is we got to do ceremony only right now. We can't do reception and it has to be outside. Well, that's what I can do. I can put together this beautiful venue. I can have all of the flowers there that could, you know, that they could need or want. I can have an officiant there, just like a clerk recorder. You know, I can provide a killer photographer, videographer, and it's just a turnkey approach. It's basically like, if you're considering going to a courthouse, consider this instead. We are literally seeing the events industry deteriorate and transform right before our eyes. It's a beautiful opportunity for us to press into something new. I think that there's a lot of shifting going on, a lot of sifting going on at the same time, and we're getting down to the bare minimum of what is truly important. I'm gonna keep spinning ideas out and seeing how they work, and <laughs> throwing them out into the universe and seeing if that's what other people need or want to do. But I'm gonna stay open and hopeful and. I do believe this will pass, but I'm not so certain that the dynamics and how we view weddings and wedding planning going forward haven't forever been altered. People should press into what's happening, press into the change, and lean into it as best you can. It's not an ideal situation, and a lot of visions and dreams have been crushed and broken, but I think it's a beautiful, unique opportunity to make new ones.